You're watching Alabama's WVUA News at 6. Some Northport merchants are upset about a possible hotel that's being planned for the downtown Northport area. We'll hear from business owners about those plans. And you're looking live at the city of Tuscaloosa from the WVUA Tower Cam. Alabama's home team forecast is straight ahead. Good evening, I'm Philip Coleman. And I'm Lauren Brooks. Well, the game is over and the tide is victorious again. But with the end of the homecoming weekend comes the cleanup that goes along with such a busy weekend in Tuscaloosa. Today, the remains of the long weekend came down on the University of Alabama campus. The homecoming weekend brought in tens of thousands of people to the Tuscaloosa area. The weekend culminated in the big game against the Ole Miss Rebels. And during that game, Alabama outplayed the Rebels and came up victorious 23-10, making the Tides record 6-1. And, and we'll have more on that during Alabama's home team sports. Meanwhile, WVUA was at Coach Nick Saban's news conference today where we asked the coach about his wife being on WVUA for the homecoming parade broadcast. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I hope you're not trying to get me in trouble. <laughs> I don't know if she had the expectation that I was supposed to be watching or not, but um, I wasn't. I didn't. But I heard about it. <laughs> and of course, your home team had complete live coverage of the homecoming parade on Saturday. But don't worry if you missed it. You can check out our website, WVUATV.com, and see the complete parade broadcast when celebrity co-host Mrs. Terry Saban joined WVUA's Lynn Brooks. Just click on News, and there you'll find a selection of everything homecoming. And just for the record, she did a great job. In case Coach Saban did get to see that. Well, the city of Northport is tangled in a controversy over a proposed hotel on Main Avenue. Business owners of downtown Northport are divided over the plan for a Hampton Inn on the riverfront because of disputes over the hotel's appearance and available parking. Northport City Administrator Scott Collins points out that the city has little input on the final decision since the hotel is not scheduled to be built on city land. He reminds business people that this debate is more than a symbol of division. He says the discussion over how to squeeze in the hotel is a sign of good times for the city. After all, even the business owners that aren't happy with the current plan are working to find some alternatives. We're down to how do you make it fit. That's a pretty, um, a pretty easy question that communities all across this country would love to be faced with answering today. How do we manage our growth instead of how do we manage our decline? A lot of these things could be worked out. They created the crisis by allowing this to happen for a year and throwing a plan out and saying, now, either take the plan or you're going to be the one that kills the hotel. And if you couldn't make the meeting tonight for the downtown merchants, there's a meeting tomorrow night for the city of Northport to discuss the plans for the hotel on that riverfront property. That's scheduled for 6 p.m. tomorrow night at the Public Safety Building. That's right behind Pizza Hut on McFarland Boulevard. Mayor Bobby Herndon says that's where the city will take comments and hear your concerns about the new hotel. Details surrounding a pedestrian hit in Tuscaloosa are starting to surface, including what the suspect could be charged with. It happened early Saturday morning at the intersection of University Boulevard and 4th Avenue near the east side of the U of A campus. The Tuscaloosa Metro Homicide Unit says a car hit a 35-year-old man from South Haven, Mississippi. The man was crossing 4th Avenue with a group of friends when the car struck him. The homicide unit says the car left the scene, but investigators successfully tracked it down. The homicide unit says the driver could face felony charges for leaving the scene of an accident with injuries. The suspect vehicle struck the pedestrian. A piece of that car was left behind. The investigator was actually able to determine what type of car it was by that piece of evidence oh, off the vehicle. Right. Uh, he did a search for that brand of car in the area and actually located the suspect at his residence. And the driver is in custody pending charges of leaving the scene of an accident with injuries. The victim remains in critical condition. 
The election is just 15 days away and the races are starting to heat up. But one issue that's getting little mention this year, large jury verdicts that were once a hot issue here in Alabama. Dr. Robert Bentley, the gubernatorial Republican nominee, has asked for limits on medical malpractice suits, but hasn't made it a major issue in his campaigning. Democratic nominee Ron Sparks has not mentioned liability lawsuits in any of his speeches. Tom Darthy, chairman of the Alabama Civil Justice Reform Committee, says the lawsuits haven't been an issue because businesses feel the Alabama Supreme Court will, quote, straighten out any wrong that occurs at a lower court, end quote. And the two men up for governor will take the stage at Auburn University tomorrow night at 7. Bentley and Sparks will be debating, debating some of the hot topics that are facing the state before the November 2nd election. This is the second debate put on by the League of Women Voters, along with the Student Government Associations at both the University of Alabama and Auburn University. The debate will be broadcast live on both Alabama Public Television and Alabama Public Radio. And of course, Alabama's home team will have complete coverage of the big elections November 2nd. We'll have the latest information on WVA News at 4, 5, 6, and 10. We will also have live cut-ins throughout the evening and we'll bring you the latest numbers running across the top of your television screen all that evening. Be sure to make WVA the place you turn for all your election coverage. Researchers at Auburn University are investigating whether shellfish farms could help improve Alabama's coastal economy. The university's shellfish lab on Dauphin Island near Mobile is working with volunteers and conducting experiments to see if oyster farms used along other coasts could survive in Alabama. At one oyster farm in Louisiana, rows of oysters are suspended in water and placed in cages to protect them from predators. They can also be removed from the water and exposed to sunlight to kill off seaweed. And a pair of free beach concerts drew more than 65,000 people to the Alabama coast to make up for some of that lost revenue from the BP oil spill last summer. Country singer Brad Paisley performed on Sunday to a crowd of around 30,000 and Bon Jovi drew in a crowd of about 35,000. The concerts are meant to bring in business during a normally slow time of year, the fall, and most of the tickets were given away with vacation property rentals. But if you miss those concerts, there is still a chance for you to catch one of those free performances. Country singer Alan Jackson will take the stage at Orange Beach at the Wharf Amphitheater in October, October the 30th. That concert will kick off at 7.30 p.m. The ruling for Democratic Senator Quentin Ross Jr. of Montgomery, one of the 11 people indicted on charges in the latest bingo probe, will happen tomorrow. The ruling scheduled for today was postponed by Judge Terry Moore. If you're looking at video from last week's arraignments, Senator Ross is pleading that the restrictions put on him because of the indictment is prohibiting him from preparing his defense or doing his public duties. Any Prosecutors words, in the case say they have things. no objections to Ross talking to potential witnesses as long as there's an attorney present. Attorneys for several other defendants attended and said if Ross is successful, they plan to make the same request. Coming up for you here on WVA News at 6, some students took some time out of their studies to play around. But it was all for a good cause. We've got the details in today's Capstone Correspondent Report. And one thing about dry, clear weather in West Alabama, you get beautiful sunset shots. And another one this afternoon as we look off to the west from our tower cam, we'll talk about the weather for the next seven days for West Alabama when we come back. And is the Alabama offense stuck in second gear? Gary Harris will have the latest in Alabama's home team sports. Students at the University of Alabama took a study break for some fun and games. And it all went to support a good cause. WVUA Sarah Killian explains in this week's Capstone Correspondent Report. Hi, I'm Capstone Correspondent Sarah Killian, a senior majoring in broadcast news and political science. DVDs, Crimson Tide merchandise, and book scholarships were all up for grabs this week, and students only had a minute to win it. The Ferguson Center Student Union hosted a mini game night modeled after the hit TV show, Minute to Win It. Students had to complete several tasks in under a minute in order to win much coveted prizes. 
All the money raised from the event went to support Secret Meals for Hungry Children, an organization that provides weekend meals for underprivileged children in Alabama. The general election is just two weeks away, and students at the Capstone are busy getting ready. United States Congressman Robert Adderholt will pay a visit to the university this week. Adderholt will be the keynote speaker at this week's College Republican Gathering. The event will be tomorrow night at 7 in the Ferguson Center Ballroom. And if you would like to see the University of Alabama through the eyes of a student, go to WVUATV.com. I'm Capstone correspondent Sarah Killian for WVUA News. Thank you, Sarah. As we take a quick break, sunset over the city of Tuscaloosa. Alabama's home team forecast with John Mason is next. Alabama's home team weather. Well, we just wrapped up that beautiful sunset set here in Tuscaloosa. Now we talk temperatures and clear weather across the area. Look at this, though. We do have the uh, twilight here as we look back west over the city of Tuscaloosa. Temperature-wise, here's what we're dealing with. We've got 78 here now. We've got a dew point of 47 and a calm wind and obviously mostly clear skies. Now today we did see some clouds move through uh, West Alabama and Tuscaloosa County, but no rain, just some high to mid-level clouds uh, that passed on by. And we did warm up despite those clouds out there. We made it up to 83 today in Tuscaloosa. We were in the 80s all across the state of Alabama. Auburn, the cool spot at 77, 81 in Muscle Shoals. And more sunshine over in Mississippi shows you what uh, that will give you in the afternoon. Temperatures in the mid to upper 80s over there. Memphis at 86 in Tennessee and, of course, 85 in Tupelo today. Uh, 77, the cool spot on the board over in Auburn. Right now, we do have 78 degrees in Tuscaloosa, and it's a touch cooler. As usual, to the north of us, Haleyville at 71, and Coleman right now at 68 degrees, and Demopolis at 73. And we should fall into the 70s and down into the 60s between now and, say, 10 o'clock tonight. So outdoor plans this evening, great once again. Typical fall weather, at least at night, even though during the daytime we are just a touch warmer than uh, we should be this time of year by about 7 or 8 degrees. Let's go ahead and show you really what's going to happen over the next couple of days. Today we dealt with just some cloud cover that continues to stream on to the east. Obviously no rain here and a clearing line setting up back in northwest Alabama and in Tuscaloosa as we saw uh, from our tower cam shot. It's starting to, to clear off to the west and that's going to be the case tonight. So we will see temperatures back in the 40s to start tomorrow. But off to the north and west you see this band of rain associated with the cold front and it's the next weather maker for West Alabama should arrive sometime uh, tomorrow evening into early Wednesday. So most of the day tomorrow, in fact all of the day, should be nice, partly cloudy at best. Uh, temperatures warm once again, probably in the mid 80s if we get a healthy amount of sunshine. And then as uh, we go through the evening hours tomorrow, this front will move in. But it just appears right now we're going to have very small rain chances when it does. A very small chance of rain, roughly 20% again late tomorrow night and into Wednesday. We'll show you that on the seven day in just a minute. But tonight, fair skies and comfortable temperatures uh, as opposed to this morning, which was, were around 43, will be closer to 48 to start the day with a calm wind. And then tomorrow we're back with sunshine and warm weather. And I think the clouds come in as we go late in the day tomorrow uh, and then into the overnight hours. That's when the better chance of uh, the heavier cloud cover and maybe even a shower moves in. 85 tomorrow, our forecast high for Tuscaloosa. Let's go ahead and give you the seven day forecast. I wish we could um, deliver at least a warmer number, or at least not a warmer number, at least a higher number on our rain chances than 20% because uh, obviously we are still getting close to uh, 12 inches behind on our rainfall totals in, in West Alabama. So a small chance of rain as the front moves through and then we're back to normal. We're in the upper 70s. We're down in the 40s again at night. It's a little flash of warm air, warm weather, then back to the normal stuff afterwards. Except for the lack of rain, not a bad forecast though. That's right, yeah, and, and we were talking about that at five. You know, you can pick and choose your battles and, and beautiful, comfortable weather, it's hard to beat. <laughs> you got that yeah. right. Thanks, John. Thanks, John. The Southeastern Conference has issued a statement on Saturday's controversial officiating call in that Arkansas-Auburn game. The details next. Tonight on WVUA News at 10, oil and gas developer T. Boone Pickens is in Tuscaloosa talking about America's addiction to foreign oil. We'll hear his plan to end the United States' dependence on other countries. We'll also take you to a meeting about a proposed hotel along Northport's riverfront and a look at some creative pumpkin carvings as well. Join us for all that and more tonight at 10. Now, the Tuscaloosa Chevrolet Sports Update with WVUA's Gary Harris. 
Bama football practice this afternoon as the Tide gets ready for Tennessee. Dante Hightower moving pretty well. Of course, he's a, a starter on the inside at linebacker, but he's also been playing a lot at the jack position. DJ Fluker, good to see that. Still wearing the black non-contact jersey, but the big right offensive tackle uh, popping the pads there a little bit. We'll have uh, more on him in a moment, more on all the injuries in just a moment. McElroy to uh, Darius Hanks. Boy, Alabama would like to get that passing game untracked especially downfield. The DBs, John Fulton and Daquan Menzi working there. You'll see Demarcus Miller, number 28, and B.J. Scott, number one. Secondary had a really good game against Ole Miss. And finally, Julio Jones played with that fractured hand against uh, the Rebels. Didn't play in the second half, but uh, Coach Saban said he's fine today and we'll be ready to go against Tennessee again. More on the injuries in just a moment. And good evening, everyone. The Crimson Tide posted a 23-10 victory over Ole Miss this past Saturday night, but still the offense seemed, uh, seemed sluggish. The running game uh, not effective, kind of like they're stuck in second gear. So as you might imagine, the offense was the main topic of conversation at Coach's weekly press conference today. Many fans and media types are pointing the finger at quarterback Greg McElroy, but Coach Saban says that's not necessarily a fair gauge. You know, I know that, you know, on many occasions, it's always the quarterback's fault. Um, but quarterback is a hard position to play when the people around you aren't doing exactly what they're supposed to do. And I'm sure that uh, every guy on our offensive team would certainly, you know, say that they could play better, probably including the quarterback. Where I was, you know, through seven games last year, it's night and day compared to this year. And, you know, everyone's going to try to find a problem, and that's fine. And I try to find problems within it myself, and I try to look at the areas where I need to improve. And uh, there are plenty of areas, you know, out there that, I, that I'd like to get better at. And, uh, but I look at from last year to this year, you know, I'm just I'm playing a whole lot better than last year, and, I'm, and I have a lot more confidence than last year. And I think, uh, you know, we just have to do a better job of being balanced within the offense. I mean, it's a little frustrating because uh, we want to score every time we get the ball. But there's things we have to work on um, during the week. And now that injury update for the Tide. It looks like D.J. Fluker might miss the Tennessee game. He, of course, missed the Ole Miss game. Coach Saban said today that uh, Fluker is very questionable. As I said, he sat out Ole Miss with a pool growing and was replaced by Alfred McCullough in the starting lineup. Saban also said cornerbacks Daquan Menzi and Demarcus Milliner, linebacker Courtney Upshaw, and tailback Eddie Lacy would be limited at practice to start the week. Saban says wide receiver Julio Jones, though, is fine and won't be limited at all. Jones had surgery on a broken hand last week and sat out the second half against Ole Miss. But Saban says an x-ray didn't show further damage. But the reason he sat out the second half was because a ball hit his index finger and stretched the stitches in his hand. Well, the Southeastern Conference offered an explanation. Oh, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Bama and Tennessee, Saturday evening at 6 p.m. And that game will be televised by ESPN. The Crimson Tide is a 17-point favorite in Knoxville. Of course, we'll have much more on the Tide and the balls as the week progresses here on Home Team Sports. And now to the SEC. The conference office offered an explanation for one decision made during Arkansas's 65-43 loss to Auburn, but not uh, for another. Rogers Redding, the head of the uh, SEC officials, issued a statement regarding Auburn running back Mario Fannin's four-yard touchdown run in the first half. The ball was punched out of Fannin's hands by safety Tremaine Thomas near the goal line. At least one official signaled the ball belonged to Arkansas. The officials conferred after the play and uh, ruled it was a touchdown. It was upheld after video replay. The head of linesman signaled touchdown. Redding said the line judge signaled fumble. After discussion between the two, it was agreed upon that the head linesman had a better unobstructed view of the play. Now this play here, which was a huge play in the game as well, with Auburn nursing a one-point lead. The Arkansas running back appeared to be down, but it was ruled a fumble and upheld by the replay booth. The SEC did not make a statement regarding this play. Auburn, of course, won the game 65-43. to Well, former Bama linebacker D'Amico Ryans is done for the year after tearing his left Achilles That's tendon right on there. Sunday. The injury occurred no just before halftime. The Texans' 35-41 win over the Chiefs. You see there, non-contact. He just went up into the air trying to bat down a, a pass. And, uh, boy, the Achilles just like he gave out. Coach Gary Kubiak says Ryans will have surgery within the next couple of days to repair the injury and will be lost for the season. A tough break for D'Amico, an all-pro, and also a tough break for the Texans' the defense. That's a look at sports. The News at 6 will return right after this. The folks showed off their drill skills in a competition that included some tricky maneuvers. It's called the Oil Olympics. Now, this oil field skills competition tested the pros at what they do daily, including a two-man roustabout relay where the workers had to cut pipe and make an A-frame, and a crane contest where an operator had to lower a barrel of oil onto a bullseye they couldn't even see 
and navigate a chain through a corridor of poles without knocking over any tennis balls with the help of a spotter. The winner, Ron Jackson, hoisted up the prize of $350 in cash, and he also won an oil Dorado belt buckle, so he gets to make the fashion statement as well. <laughs> wow, that looks like tough stuff. I you know, talk about shape. your competition. Yeah, really. Man. Not as tough as it has been, at least Gary's been on us over here, wondering about some cool weather, and it's yeah. just not here. So let's look at our seven-day. We'll, we'll do a little bit better later this week. It's going to be warm tomorrow, though. We'll be up to 85. That's a very warm day for this time of year. Small chance of rain tomorrow night and early Wednesday, then cooler afterwards. And, of course, we'll tell you more about it tonight at 10. All right. That's all for now. Find us online anytime. Just go to WVUATV.com. And our next newscast is tonight at 10, but we'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a good evening. You're watching Alabama's WVUA News at 6. Straight ahead, how one group is trying to show kids how to overcome bullying. And you're looking live over the city of Tuscaloosa from the WVUA Tower Cam. Alabama's home team forecast is coming up. Good evening, I'm Philip Coleman. Lynn Brooks has the evening off. Friday night means football for lots of families, and now professional football officials are talking about hard hits and concussions. This past weekend, some hard hits left several players with concussions and also left some analysts calling for stiffer penalties for players who make helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. The NFL commissioner says they are doing everything they can to make the game safer. You know, football is a game of rules, and you have to make sure the rules are respected and they're, they're played by, and there are certain techniques that we think are dangerous that we are trying to remove from the game. Uh, we don't shy away from the aspect of the game that's rough, and, but there are ways in which we can make the game safer, and that's what we've tried to do. And as West Alabama's high school football players are putting on the pads tonight, what do coaches have to say about safety on the field and the example set by pro football players? Tuscaloosa County head high school football coach Lee Gibson says safety is always a priority with young players. Coach Gibson also says the team adheres to a very strict concussion policy, preventing any player from practicing or participating in games until they have been cleared by a doctor. Every one of those licks that you see, helmet to helmet, they're not, a, not all of them are intentional. You know, no matter what you do, you're going to have some occasions where you're going to have some unintentional helmet to helmet, but when you see it, you've got to correct it and let the kids know that that's how you can get severely injured and possibly paralyzed or even worse. And the coach also says safety issues are focused on long before the fall season starts and equipment is closely inspected before the players hit the field each time. It's late October and that means it's time for the Crimson Tide to take on the Tennessee Volunteers. The Tide has played the Vols a total of 92 times. Alabama leads the series 47 to 37 games with eight ties. The two teams first played each other way back in 1901 in Birmingham with both teams scoring just a single touchdown and the game ending with a tie. Meanwhile, in Neyland Stadium, the Tide has a slight edge there over the Vols with 21 wins to 19. And you don't have to wait until kickoff to get your Alabama football fix. Start your day with Crimson Tide kickoff. WVUA's Crimson Tide kickoff starts at 8 o'clock on Saturday morning. It's presented by AT&T and Alpha Insurance. Sports anchors Gary Harris and John Huddleston will preview each week's game and will have live interviews. This week you'll hear from Bob Kessling, the voice of the Vols. Also being discussed, Tennessee coach Derek Dooley has coached under Nick Saban. Hear what they have to say about their relationship and coaching against each other. Plus, you'll hear from other guests, feature stories, and more. Join us every Saturday morning for Crimson Tide kickoff. Now, in the Crime Watch tonight, an update on the stabbing in Tuscaloosa. Last night around 7.15, Tuscaloosa police responded to Brookhaven Apartments on an assault call. When officers arrived, they found a 25-year-old man who was bleeding severely from his left arm. The suspect is 32-year-old Juanita Rivers. Investigators say the man appeared to have been stabbed with scissors. 
Investigators say they located the suspect and arrested her a short time later. It gets better. That was the simple yet meaningful message behind a student gathering on the steps of the Gorgas Library at the University of Alabama today. Guy Fashon, the organizer of the event, told us the recent suicides by several gay teenagers who had been victims of bullying because of their sexual orientation inspired him to take a stand. He says the victims of this kind of abuse need to know they are not alone and that it's time to bring this issue what? into what? the light. <laughs> bullying is wrong. Let's just jump off the fence and say bullying is wrong. And if we start from that premise, then hopefully we could build a community where people are accepted for who they are and also not judged for who they perceive or who they're perceived to be. The It Gets Better campaign is part of the Trevor Project, which is an online resource for those that have been the victims of abuse and other forms of bullying. And bullying has become a hot topic all across the nation. Most recently, there have been reports about half a dozen boys committing suicide after they were teased about their sexual orientation. The Tuscaloosa City School Board discussed an anti-bullying policy last night. Board members say bullying has become a problem in public schools nationwide, and they say they want to be proactive about finding a solution. Board member Dan Messner says problems off school property are becoming more prevalent, and in the past, school officials weren't able to do anything about that. But now, they say, if city school leaders change their anti-bullying policies, school officials will be able to step in if there is a problem outside the classroom. Tuscaloosa was in the national spotlight just this morning. In that's NBC's Joe Scarborough aired his show, Morning Joe, this morning, live from Tuscaloosa's Ramajama restaurant. Scarborough, along with co-host Mika Brzezinski, spent the end of this week making appearances at events such as the Lincoln-Reagan dinner held in Tuscaloosa earlier this week. Scarborough explains why Alabama is so dear to his heart. Alabama means so much to me, uh, not only because of my experience, but really more when I sent my son here. Uh, the, the entire community has just uh, embraced him and helped him so much. Now, Scarborough was in West Alabama last night to be honored by the U of A School of Communication. Scarborough is in Tuscaloosa for the Hall of Fame induction ceremony for the U of A's College of Communication and Information Sciences. Scarborough graduated from the Capstone in 1985. He served in Congress representing Florida from 1994 to 2001, and he went on to host the TV program Scarborough Country. And that was followed by his current position as host of MSNBC's Morning Joe talk show. Now, from election 2010, if you haven't registered to vote for November's election, time is up. Election officials tell WVUA if you didn't make it to the courthouse by 5 o'clock today, you can still mail in your registration. If you are mailing your form, it must be postmarked. Today, Secretary of State Beth Chapman says anyone wanting to see a sample ballot can visit the state's election website. And for more information, you can also go to our website, WVUATV.com, and just click on the numbers and links sections. Also, polling places and registration status is also available from each county's board of registrars. Now, still to come here on the news at 6. A student at one New York University is dead after police opened fire on him. The story when we come back. And I'm meteorologist Richard Scott. We're looking live from our Tuscaloosa Tower camera back towards the west. Absolutely gorgeous sunset from our tower camera right now. We have any rain in the forecast though. Full details and much more is up next in home team weather. Plus, the Crimson Tide football team departed this afternoon for Knoxville, Tennessee. Gary Harris will have the details on that coming up in Alabama's home team sports. College students in New York are mourning the shooting death of a football player killed by police. This is cell phone video reportedly shot after the incident. Police in Mount Pleasant, New York, about 30 miles north of Manhattan, say Dan Roy Henry Jr. hit two officers with his car and was driving toward a third officer when they opened fire. 
But there are now allegations of a cover-up in Henry's death. That comes from the attorney for three students who witnessed the police killing DJ Henry outside a New York club on Sunday. Benita Zellman believes the police department at the center of this investigation has not been providing an impartial investigation. We are demanding that the state attorney general and the Department of Justice get involved and take over this investigation. So far, we know that this investigation under Chief Alagno, despite what he's telling the media, is a mere cover-up for the misconduct and brutality of the police. And during another news conference today, the chief of police there in Mount Pleasant, New York, promised a thorough and impartial investigation into Henry's death. Police say Henry drove his car into a group of them, while witnesses say Henry was trying to move his car when police opened fire. Meanwhile, former football star O.J. Simpson will remain in prison. This after the Nevada Supreme Court ruled it will not overturn Simpson's conviction on kidnapping and armed robbery charges. He is currently serving a 33-year sentence for an incident in Las Vegas in a hotel room there back in the year 2007. Simpson and the men he brought with him say they were just trying to recover some of his memorabilia and other collectible items. The Nevada Supreme Court did order a new trial for Symptoms co-defendant Clarence Stewart. A Stone Age door in exceptional condition has been found in the heart of a Swiss city in Zurich. This artifact, thought to be more than 5,000 years old, was recovered during an archaeological evacuation eva before the construction of an apartment building there for the Zurich Opera House. The door remains on the ground and workers will try to pull it up next week. It will be stabilized, preserved, and probably put into a museum. Now, once again, you're looking live over the city of Tuscaloosa at an absolutely gorgeous sunset from that WVUA tower cam. Alabama's home team forecast for your weekend is coming up next. Stay tuned. Now, here's Alabama's home team weather forecast with Richard Scott. Hey, welcome back and a good Friday evening to you. Thought this would be a nice way to end things for this Friday evening. Looking at a gorgeous sunset still looking westbound from our Tuscaloosa Tower camera. Bryant Denny Stadium's down here at the bottom of your screen and the Tuscaloosa Airport. They're just on the horizon there. Nice sunset out there this evening. Temperatures not too bad at all as well. 76 degrees over the Tuscaloosa Airport. Still sunny skies in place and and the dew point temperature 41 still some really dry air in place and the temperatures are quickly cooling off now the sun is setting we'll notice those temperatures continue to drop pretty quickly tonight elsewhere temperature wise 73 over most of shoals 76 over in the magic city uh, a bit warmer towards the south towards jackson meridian and montgomery still registering the upper 70s around 78 to 79 degrees our high school football games tonight not looking bad it will be dry clear skies in place some high level clouds obviously starting moving in from the west but still mostly clear skies for our our Friday night football, 7 o'clock, uh, 68 degrees rather. By 10 o'clock tonight, temperatures approaching that 56 degree mark. So if you're heading out towards the local high school football games, you may want to take a long sleeve, a light jacket. It will start to cool off for us. Now, high pressure over the southeast giving us sinking air. It's been dry the past few days. You know how the weather story has been around here. Dry, hot during the day, cold at night. Uh, thanks to high pressure, but things are changing west of us. A big time storm system happening over the central plains. Now that will be migrating our way. Now you see the clouds starting to move in now. You see from our Tuscaloosa Tower camera earlier, high level cirrus clouds starting to move in. No rain underneath those clouds, still really dry around here, but just to the west, moisture is increasing over the plains back towards Louisiana and Arkansas. And you're starting to see those returns on radar, some showers and storms starting to pop up. Those will gradually spread off towards the east. And high pressure moves off towards the south and east, and we start to get that flow out of the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf is still very warm. We're going to see some warm, moist air returning for Sunday and Monday. A lot of clouds around by Sunday. Here comes our first cold front. Now, this front not going to make it all the way down into Alabama. It will get close enough to spark off a good coverage of rain and storms. And this is the best beneficial rain we've seen in a long time. We need the rain badly out there, more than 10 inches, almost 11 inches behind out of the Tuscaloosa Airport. Looks like early Monday morning, around daylight, 6 o'clock in the morning, showers and storms widespread, and those will gradually spread out as the front does lift off towards the east. And uh, we stay in that southerly flow around. Once we go towards Tuesday and Wednesday, our next front on the board still back in the plains by Tuesday morning. 
and that's what's going to bring our return to some drying conditions. Also, some storms for that front as well. 47 degrees tonight, clear skies and kind of chilly for us tonight. 83 degrees tomorrow, good supply of sunshine and more nice conditions overall. Rain chance moves into the forecast late in the day on Sunday, and you see I've got a 40% chance of rain for Sunday night into Monday. The best chance of rain happening after 6 o'clock Sunday night, lasting through about 7 or 8 o'clock Monday morning. Good rain chances overnight, but during the daytime, rain chance only about 40%. High temperatures in the upper 80s as we go towards Tuesday and Wednesday. Lows at night, check that out. Lows in the mid-60s, much warmer at night due to the humid weather. With more moisture, temperatures at night aren't able to cool off as much. Cooler conditions back in the mix as we go towards Thursday and Friday. Hey, listen to us on the radio stations. You can hear our weather forecast each and every day on these great radio stations such as 198.5 and 102.9 Jack FM. Now here's Philip. All right, thanks Richard. And still to come, find out why head coach Wendell Hudson is confident the Alabama women's basketball team is on the way up. That's coming up next in Alabama's Home Team Sports. Now, the Tuscaloosa Chevrolet Sports Update with WVUA's Gary Harris. The Mammoth football team leaving the Malmore Athletic Complex this afternoon to uh, head to Knoxville. There's the Heisman Trophy winner, Mark Ingram. Marcel Darius has played uh, better as of late, had a really good game against Ole Miss. Julio Jones, you'll see coming up in a moment. I tell you, he's a tough young man, broken hand or not. He's been playing full speed. And uh, Coach Saban is 3-0 at UA against UT. you got to like that number. He'll be looking to make it 4-0 tomorrow night. And good evening, everyone. TGIF, Tennessee head coach Derek Dooley is the son of former Georgia head coach Vince Dooley, so there's no doubt he learned a lot of football from his dad growing up, but he also learned a lot from Nick Saban. Dooley worked for Saban for five years at LSU, then two more with the Miami Dolphins. He was asked earlier this week about their similarities as coaches and also about their differences. I, I don't know. I mean, structurally and philosophically, I mean, philosophically, I've always believed in what he believes in, and it's so that's a starting point. And, you know, a lot of our organizational structure is very similar, but we're very different personalities. And, um, you know, we have a lot of respect for each other and we're friends. And, uh, but, you know, we do, it's like any coach. You do some things that you, you believe in, some things philosophically the same, but everybody's personality is a little different, you know, and how you put it on the program. The Tide and the Vols will be meeting for the 93rd time Saturday night. Alabama leads the series on the field with 47 wins against 37 losses and seven ties. Oh, Alabama had to vacate the 2005 victory over the Vols because of the textbook case and forfeit the 93 tie because of Antonio Langham's situation. Now, there have been some great games in the series, including last year when underdog Tennessee came in as a big underdog, as I mentioned, against the Tide. But Bama, undefeated at the time, needed two block field goals by Terrence Cody in the fourth quarter, including one on the last play of the game to preserve a 12-10 victory and keep that perfect season intact. And start your Alabama-Tennessee football Saturday with Crimson Tide kickoff tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. live from University of Alabama campus, presented by AT&T and Alpha Insurance. We will break down the game for you. Have Bob Kessling on, the voice of the Vols, Brad Edwards, the BCS guru, and Rodney Orr will talk about some of the great games in the Bama UT series. Auburn quarterback Cam Newton is getting accustomed to dealing with height, but this week it has gone to a new level with his undefeated Tigers getting set to host LSU's undefeated Tigers tomorrow afternoon at Jordan-Hare Stadium. It's a huge game with SEC and national championship implications, but Newton warns that as a player, you can't get too caught up in all the excitement. Look at that! As far as uh, our preparation towards this game, it's going to be the same as any other game. Uh, we can't get caught up into the hype of, 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 you know, the parameters of what this team is capable of doing. You know, we just got to have uh, faith and, 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 and be, uh, be well prepared come game time. Here's a look at your SEC Saturday. All games are listed at Central Times. Alabama and Tennessee tomorrow night. Of course, the big one in the nation and uh, in the SEC. LSU Auburn also. Arkansas hosts Ole Miss. South Carolina travels to Vanderbilt. Mississippi State will be at home against UAB. And Georgia is at Kentucky. John Huddleston will have all your highlights and scores tomorrow night on Sports Saturday at 10-15. Well, big night last night for the Bama soccer team. It was senior night. And the Tide hosting a very good Georgia team. First half, Georgia's Rebecca Perry crosses the ball to Alexa Newfield, who beats goalie Justine Bernier far post for the goal just 10 minutes into the match. Later in the half, Alabama's Molly Atherton 
places the ball on goal, but Georgia's Ashley Baker, who had the shutout, makes the nice save. Now final minutes of the half, Caroline Simpson will place the ball on goal where Bernier looks to make the save. However, Megan Gibson hustles to steal the ball and score the goal for the Bulldogs. Georgia gets the th victory 3-0. Alabama falls to 8-6-2 overall and 3-4-2 in the SEC. And turning to hoops, the Alabama women's basketball team has been picked to finish ninth in the SEC this coming season. And head coach Wendell Hudson told reporters at the SEC Media Day function in Birmingham on Thursday that this team is headed in the right direction because the players have developed the right attitude. Well, one of the things about our team this year is that we feel like we feel like we're going to be a better basketball team than we've been in the past. And, and, for, and the reason for that is, one, the returning players are now committed to what we're trying to do. And I think that's the big key. Campbell will play an exhibition game November 6th against Alabama Huntsville and then open the regular season November 12th at home against Tennessee State. And a reminder, Football Friday coming up tonight at 1035. We've got some big games on tap. Call us with all your football scores at 205-348-7000. Football Friday, 30 minutes tonight on WBUA right after the 10 o'clock news. After a gorgeous sunset to end this Friday, what can we look for for the rest of this weekend? We're still talking nice conditions, Philip and Gary. In fact, temperatures next few days well above average, low to mid-80s, wow. all the way through Wednesday. Check that out at 86 degrees by Wednesday. Showers and storms are likely Sunday night and Monday morning. Another good chance to rain Thursday or Wednesday night into Thursday morning. We need the rain. We're now almost 11 inches behind wow. in terms of rainfall here in Tuscaloosa. It's, Coming at a good it's time. the never-ending summer. I yeah. know. Goes Just won't on cool off. On. All right, thank you both. Thanks for joining us. More news at 10. In the meantime, have a great weekend. Good night.